And Mike, that brings us to the Flames. It was, you know, certainly um, a disappointing end to their season. I think if you had told Calgary fans heading into the year after a non-playoff year that they'd win the Pacific Division and win their first round since 2015, everyone would be excited and say, great season. To lose four straight to the arch rival Edmonton Oilers, to lose in that fashion, to have the question marks that surround your star players pop up yet again. Where was Matthew Kachuk in round two? Johnny Gaudreau got awful quiet. No offense to Michael Backlund, but he was their best player throughout round two, and, and that probably shouldn't be the case. Jacob Markstrom couldn't make a save. Uh, I thought at some point in game five, he probably deserved to be pulled, Mike, for the goals that had gone in all series long. When you look at this Flames team and a summer in flux, Johnny Gaudreau pending unrestricted free agent, Matthew Kachuk, Andrew Mangiapane, Oliver Shillington, all restricted free agents, half of their blue line free agents. Going to be a summer of change, or is it going to be mostly the same team that comes back in your mind, Mike? What would you do? Well, I'm, I'm a little bit split here because I think when you look at the core pieces to the Calgary Flames that have provided so much success, they need new contracts across the board. I mean, you're looking at Gaudreau, Kachuk, Mangiapane. Those are big, big pieces, okay? And if I'm Brad Tree living the GM of Calgary, I'm trying to retain everybody, but it's going to take buy-in from those players. Like, I think those players all have to look at each other and say, hey, we were pretty good this year. We were really good. We need to take another step. And if we all go separate ways, we may not be able to get that. We don't know what's out there. So I think it's first upon the players that they want to be in Calgary to begin with. But I also think about Calgary maybe needing to speed up a little bit. Like I, at times to me, it felt like only the top two lines of Calgary could keep pace with Edmonton and that wasn't enough. And if you're going to face Edmonton in the playoffs, you got to be ready for that. And you would, it wasn't going to get any better against Colorado either. So um, I think Tree Living's got a little bit of work to massage this lineup. And I think even, especially on the back end, you look at how different the flames were with Tana out, somebody who can skate pretty well. I, I think they're going to have to fill that void as well. But I will say this, Frank, Markstrom had a fantastic year. I thought they played him too much during the season. Could have dialed that back a little bit and given him some energy. And I'm not sure he was at 100% in playoffs. Regardless, you are right. He has room to grow. Uh, and they're going to expect more out of him next season in playoffs, hoping that they get there. It's funny you said that because Jay Woodcroft kept hinting and picking at it. 63 games for, you know, we didn't play our goalie 63 games, but I didn't yeah. feel like Jacob Markstrom was tired or, or was suffering from fatigue. It, you know, it looked to me like a team that had his number. Um, one other thing to point out, for, this was the best roster that Brad Tree Living has built in Calgary. They went out, they were aggressive at the deadline, made some significant acquisitions, and maybe one of the other facets of their exit here in round two in the Battle of Alberta is the fact that some of those guys really didn't show up in critical moments. Tyler Toffoli, mm -hmm. you could make the argument, was the Flames' worst player in round two. So many uncharacteristic turnovers and giveaways for a really smart player. Um, you know, Kelly Yarncroke scored in game five, but really was kind of quiet. It was his first goal as a Flame. Um, you know, his first goal in 29 games. So, you know, they were aggressive. I liked the fact that they went out to go and try and chase it this year in a year with so many question marks at the end of it. We'll have plenty of time to talk next week and beyond about the Calgary Flames and what's going to be a fascinating summer.